All right, so let's set the stage here. What skills should I put in my resume? Let's say you're going into a restaurant and it's Austin and they have just these amazing Mexican restaurants with breakfast tacos. It's one thing you didn't know about me. So I freaking love breakfast tacos. They're like my favorite. So let's say you walk into this Mexican restaurant and you're bold that day and you say, surprise me, surprise me with the ideal breakfast taco. Knowing that deep down on the inside, you hope the waiter doesn't mess it up, but you still reassure them that they're going to do great. So the person ends up putting beans, cheese, and eggs on your taco. You're like, okay, solid choices right there. But then things start to get weird. They toss in some shrimp. They toss in some peppers, onions, and green salsa. You decide, okay, I'm going to keep an open mind. This is one type of taco that's kind of like this hodgepodge situation, but I'm going to keep an open mind and I'll probably pay for this later, but I will give a nice jog to make up for it. This is a trashy taco, but then the unthinkable happens. This person tosses in soy sauce, cabbage, and jackfruit. Imagine your reaction to this taco. There are nine, 10 different ingredients that don't go together. And this ladies and gentlemen, is what many of us are doing in our skills sections on our resume. It's just a hodgepodge, just a hodgepodge of crap that doesn't blend together whatsoever. And it doesn't really match what the person is looking for. So I've gathered some key insights from a couple of our uh, people from our management team, John and Katie. So special shout out and thanks to both of you for giving me some strategic direction in this episode. But I want you all to think of how can I craft a skill section that is targeted and that ends up garnering more interviews. Now, the way I want you to think about doing that is by thinking about the three R's, recent, relevant, and required. Let's start with recent because that one's probably the easiest one. Um, it's, it's one I think I need to mention here because there's folks on here who have skills from 1997 that they no longer really have sharpened anymore. But make sure that the resume has recent skills that you've been honing over the last several years. Don't include a skill or better yet, don't include a certification that is expired or that you no longer hold. And this is something that I would recommend anyway, because those types of jobs you're applying for probably aren't best suited for you if it's highly required and it's just a really old skill. And this brings me to the second R, which is relevant. Are the skills listed in your resume relevant for the position you're applying for, or at least are they transferable? So let's say you have project management skills as somebody in my team used as an example. So you have project man management skills and even a PMP certification. But do you include it if the job you're applying for doesn't really care about that? Of course not. And yet this is the mistake that many job seekers are making over and over again is they want to show off that awesome PMP certification. I know how hard it is to get one of those um, and show off those project management skills because they think that, okay, well, I think anyone could use a project management project manager, even if I'm applying for a position that really has nothing to do with it. That doesn't really help serve your purpose in your resume. Don't include something if it's not relevant specifically for the job you're applying for. I know it's really tough for a lot of job seekers because we want to include everything. We want everyone to see how amazing we are and how versatile we are. I, I get it. But at the end of the day, every single word you put on your resume that is extra or every single word that is not relevant ends up watering down your resume. And when you water down your resume, it doesn't give that laser sharp focus that garners interviews. So we want to make sure, of course, that the skills we have are recent and updated. And of course, we want to make sure that they're relevant for the job we're applying for. And then we want to double check the required skills listed on the job posting to make sure that our resumes include that as well. Now, this is a tricky one, of course, because we don't want to lie on our resumes. I think that's really important that 
if a skill says required and we genuinely do not have that skill <laughs> like in our in our career or that we haven't been developing that skill we should not include that in our resumes i think that's important ethically to understand yet at the same time so many of these job postings have a ton of quote required skills that they want to see and it makes it really hard to jump through that hoop at least mentally it's tough to apply to some of these jobs because there's just like a gajillion requirements or recommended skills now i would still recommend looking closely at what the job posting says is a required skill and if you have that skill under your belt even if it's not you're not like a 10 out of 10 you're not like amazing at it necessarily as long as you can talk about that skill comfortably in an interview and you have done that skill to some degree, I'd say include it on your resume if it is, of course, required. So put another way, all the skills in your resume should be related to the job you want. So don't neglect that job application and look carefully at the types of skills that are required in it and, of course, include it. And for more on your job search, please make sure to check out Let's Eat Grandma's website at letseatgrandma.com forward slash CWP. That's where you can find her blog, attend job seeker events, and learn more about her awesome resume services. That's all. I'll see you next episode this Monday morning.